This red rival rivalry been? Well, there have been, Herbie, six fumbles, five turnovers overall, and let's take a look at our city inside view. Well, one of the more physical first halves that I think we've seen this year in college football. It started early, a lot of pressure on Sam Bradford. He only played two possessions for OU. This was uh, the play that ended up knocking him out of the game. And on the other side of the football, boy, oh boy. Colt McCoy has been hit a lot. In fact, 14 times the Oklahoma defense has had a chance to put pressure on him and knock him to the ground. And you got to wonder how you make an adjustment for both these quarterbacks. Landry Jones now in for Sam Bradford. And, of course, for Colt McCoy, what can he do to slow things down? They had 10 first-half possessions and 38 offensive plays. You know, there were a couple Not of good. optimistic things, though, for Coach Davis and the, and the Horns. And I'm going to point at Whitaker. He was able to get the edge a couple yeah. of times for him. Now, what would you do to I slow down this Oklahoma defense? That, that's the thing that you have to be able to do is you have to have some kind of running game, whether it's to the outside, trying to go right into the teeth of the penetration of Oklahoma, but something to make Oklahoma's front appreciate and respect what you can do. And I, they've tried some misdirection that has worked. Right. You get the Oklahoma defense aggressive running one way, and you try to go back the other way. That might be something. If you, what's happening is... The reason you can't run the ball is because you're also losing the battle on the perimeter. He doesn't have a lot of receivers outside of Jordan Shipley helping his cause because they're not getting off of the coverage that Brent Venable's guys are putting on. And, of course, they get to handle the ball, so it'll be Texas ball at the 32. Now, let's take you back to the opening game. Down, obviously, right on it, that same shoulder. Trailing by a field goal. And there's that read option, and Whitaker starts off getting the edge on first down. This is the young man who showed the spark that we were talking about in that first half. He had gained 30 yards and given 11 back until that run. Let's check in down below with Lisa. Well, Brent, Sam Bradford is now out of his jersey, out of his pads. I saw him about 10 minutes or so ago heading into the x-ray room where that, uh, that shoulder is being x-rayed. All right, Lisa, let's hope for the best. Remember, there was always thought in the back that surgery was a possibility as they strike outside quickly. And Shipley, here comes Sam Bradford back from after having the picture taken by the X-ray machine. Left after eight plays. He hit one big pass for 65 yards to Marco Murray. And now it is Texas picking the tempo up, and here is the young running back. No question about it. What they've discovered is number 28, and they're going to keep the ball with him. Well, they also discovered the tempo and trying to get upfield and all of a sudden becoming the aggressor as an offense. This is the first three plays that we've seen Texas attacking Oklahoma instead of just trying to withstand the punishment that Oklahoma was putting on them. Childs is singled to the outside right. Quick strike to number seven. And read right away by Brian Jackson making the stop as we take a look, Herbie, at the Pacific Life game summary. Uh, there, there wasn't a lot to like if you look at the offensive side of the football, but look at the rushing yards for Oklahoma. They've been able to overcome that and hold their own with Landry Jones in there. The big thing, the third downs, Texas one for nine, and of course the bottom line, the turnovers. Oklahoma three, Texas two, and as we have it, a very low-scoring game, although here comes Texas with their first possession in the second half, looking pretty good. Kirkendall is slotted to the left. And Vondrell McGee gets his first carry of the game. Injured his shoulder against Colorado. Was able to practice late in the week and pronounced ready to go. Buckner now checks in, and McGee comes out. So they'll spread the field here on this third and seven. This is where the movement, the pre-snap movement, has given Texas's offensive line fits. They all stand up, they move around. This time they're right, actually stepping right into their stance and showing four defensive linemen. He's on the offensive line. Venables walks up, a linebacker incomplete. And it'll be fourth down. And McCoy picks himself off the ground the 15th time here today. Brent Venable is pretty excited because he knows that his defense showed the pressure. They actually only brought two and dropped nine, and about seven of them were at about five yards down the line of field. Venable's having his team completely dialed in to what Texas's offensive attack is with Colt McCoy today. Hunter Lawrence 
hit a 42 yarder in the first half. This will be 41. For the tie. Looks long enough. The battle of the field goals continues here at the Red River rivalry in Dallas. One hundred and four times these two teams have battled and you never ever know what you're going to get. Last year, high scoring, explosive offensive game. Today, a hard hitting, fierce tug of war between two defenses with four field goals. All we've got up on that scoreboard right now. Tied at six. Tucker with the ball on the tee. At the 14 is Madhu. Blasts up the middle to the 36-yard line. Freshman Landry Jones will put it in play. And a reminder that on ESPN Georgia Tech, so you want to keep an eye on that one with the BCS rankings due out tomorrow. Landry Jones and alongside Chris Brown, the running back, checking over to see what uh, Kevin Wilson is dialing up after taking a look at Muschamp's defense. Three seconds on that clock. Got to hurry. Did just get it off. No, maybe they didn't. Uh, Oklahoma calling a timeout. Looks like it came from Bob Stoops. Right before you're right, the play clock went down. That's a shame with this kind of game. You want to hold on to your timeouts as long as possible. Especially when you're coming out of a timeout with a, just starting a drive here. And I thought maybe he got it off. Yeah, yeah, I know. We've had some terrific views on a... Uh, on a gorgeous, just a gorgeous Saturday afternoon offered up by the MetLife Blimp. MetLife, of course, has the protection you need for the most important ifs in your life. So visit MetLife.com today. Sides equally split. Every now and then there'll be a rascal from one side or the other who How do you get invade the, the other side. All that burn horns. Trent Williams returned late in the first half, and he's back out there here again. Not much given with anybody's running game here today. Acho, that's Sam. The brothers, one's 81, the other's 18. Emmanuel and Sam, and they've been very, very active. And now we've got, uh, is that Lamar Houston, who's down, the senior from Colorado Springs, one of the few youngsters, Herbie, uh, who didn't play high school football in Texas. In fact, there are two starters for the Longhorns, not in the state. He's one of them. He's out of Colorado Springs, and Ben Alexander oh, is out of South Carolina, and that does not look good. Oh, boy. He's grabbing his, at his right knee, and Lamar Houston is the anchor of this, this defensive line with so many questions about they, they lost great players, Brian Arakpo, Roy Miller, among uh, some of the others. Lamar Houston's become the, the leader of this group, and he has dominated the football game today constantly in the Oklahoma backfield to the far left there it looked like Brody Eldridge who's wearing number 50 today the tight end has moved back to center rolled up on his knee you can see by the reaction oh boy yeah, you see Will Muschamp there the headset on clapping and, uh, of course, Mac Brown has named him the coach in waiting. It's sort of interesting because there are big controversies around the country about coaches in waiting, certainly down at Florida State. Remember, they're also in place in Kentucky and Maryland. But it's working beautifully in Texas, and both men told me this week it's because Mac Brown made the decision. And nothing's going to happen without Brown deciding when and if, and everything goes straight through him. And right now, Will Muschamp is one of the highest salaried defensive coordinators in the country and he said I love my job I'm not even thinking about having all the responsibility so it works at Texas but it has not worked at Florida State for a number of reasons second down and nine Jones with time Herbie and it's dropped 
This, this, tech, this Texas secondary has played a great football game. One of the big battles within this football game is going to be the Oklahoma wide receivers trying to win one-on-one -on -one matchups against the Texas secondary. Right now, advantage Texas on the perimeter. Third and nine. Diving attempt by Kenny, and it'll be fourth down, and the Sooners are forced to punt. And what, what Texas is doing is they're, they're defending the short throw, and this time Kenny actually does a good job of getting behind Aaron Williams. The ball is led downfield. I think Kenny has a chance to run underneath that. Texas trying to take away a lot of the short throws, the more high per percentage passes by Landry Jones. This is the 11th punt of this game. Jordan Shipley has had only two cracks and returning punts for a total of minus three yards. It came after it. Fair catch by Shipley. Back at the 22-yard line. So Colt McCoy and the Horns, once again, we'll see if they can get anything going. They've had 141 yards of offense. The State Fair of Texas and the Deep Fryers never quit, folks. While this is on, whatever you want, they'll deep fry for it, including butter. And, uh, I was going to say, fried butter. So there is Jeremy Beal. Herbie, he had six unassisted tackles in the first half. Austin English had a couple of sacks. And back they come with Whitaker, searching for that edge on the outside. Jackson quickly up to help number 44 on that, on that running attempt. So Fozzie Whitaker is the active running back here for the Horns. They've been waiting, as you've said several times, they've been waiting for him to bust yeah. out. Yeah, now that he's finally healthy, they feel that this could be a, a chance for him to break out. But, you know, Brent, I, I think mixing in Whitaker, the misdirection looks, I think it still comes back to Colt McCoy, ultimately not just throwing, but just enough of him running to keep the Oklahoma defense on. Come back with Whitaker, and he was tripped up. He'd had a big gain, but he was tripped up by Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds wearing number four a year ago in this game before he suffered the knee injury. He was wearing number eight, but he has gone back to his high school number that he wore back in his days in Las Vegas, hoping to change his luck. He's had three knee surgeries here in a couple of years. So it's third down and eight. And it's McCoy again with the field spread. They rush only three. And he fires against that for a first down that time. And that is Marquise Goodwin. Now, you talk about somebody with speed, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let this freshman get loose on you. Well, there's the attention being paid to Shipley, the slot receiver. What it does is it occupies enough defenders that it opens up a nice passing lane right behind the linebacker, Travis Lewis. Good recognition that time by Colt McCoy, and he finds his freshman for a first down. We're talking about a youngster from Garland, Texas, Marquise Goodwin. Long jumper, sprinter, he can do it all. Cody Johnson dashes out. Now, with more time, the last two times, he's had the benefit of time to throw the ball, and uh, so he picks out Johnson. That's the first time he's touched the ball here. Yeah, he, it's, there again, there's a little bit of rhythm. Here they are again with a fast snap. Coming right back with it. First down at the 45-yard line, so there is their big short yardage back. Here comes big Cody Johnson. How about the line that time, taking on those linebackers and dictating a little bit of a little assertive attitude and pushing Travis Lewis and company for the first time. And Lewis is down. Number 28, Travis Lewis is down. So veteran offensive coordinator Greg Davis has decided we're going to run the ball. We're going to run right at this fierce front and see what we've got. And so far, it has been successful moderately here in the second half. But they did tie it up with that second field goal. And there is Greg upstairs in his 12th season with Mac. He's thinking about when you run the football, it helps in so many different areas. Great to see Lewis up. But it helps you in so many different areas. It slows down the defensive line. It makes the linebackers aware of the running game. It makes the safeties have to take a peek and be aware of the running game. It sets up play action. And just there's so many different things you can do 
for Greg Davis with his offense. If he can just get a little bit from the running game, all of a sudden Colt McCoy is going to be back there with plenty of time to throw the football. There are three seniors on this offensive line. Gulatoski, left tackle. Tanner's the left guard. And Hall, he's the key man in the middle of that offensive line. Now you see Gulatoski there and Tanner. And Hall brings him up. John Childs, and now this is the Wild Horn, the version of the Wildcat. If you were watching the Miami Dolphins last Monday night, you had to say to yourself, you know, we're going to see more and more of this. This will be the direct snap, and they're going to bring Colt McCoy off the end around, try to buy some time. Nothing doing on that play, Herbie. No, they're prepared very, very well. Actually, they put a lot of pressure on Colt McCoy that time. It wasn't as if he had time to be able to let the play develop. They were trying to catch them napping, thinking that Colt McCoy wouldn't be involved in the play. But of course, when the ball gets flipped back to him, the secondary has everybody covered downfield and Colt fortunate to just be able to throw that ball away. That is the 16th time that Colt McCoy has gone to the ground today. Second down and 10. The Sooners D determined not to let number 12 or number 8 beat them today. Comes back in underneath the good one and that time the Sooners again were ready and Quentin Carter, the junior from Las Vegas, did not let him get up to speed. That's a great shot by a safety way out on the edge. How about the closing speed right here? Gets around a potential block by Jordan Shipley. You can see Shipley frustrated with himself for not getting out there. Nice job Quentin Carter being a very physical and athletic safety for being asked to cover the electric electrifying Goodwin on the outside. Third and ten. Goes a deep strike. Juggled Buckner incomplete and a penalty flag. Ibaloy, who had replaced one of the linebackers, was working on Buckner, the flex in. Press interference on the defense from the five. 15 yards from the previous spot. Again, this is a matchup that Colt McCoy will take. Buckner, who has great size at 6'4", and some good speed downfield, has what it takes to be able to make that play. And the reason I think the, the call comes through is if you don't turn around, there wasn't a lot of contact, but if you don't turn around, you almost look as if you're guilty, but there wasn't a lot of, a lot of contact that time from Ibaloy. There's Fozzie Whitaker. He's the running back for the Horns. Striking at the middle again for nine yards. And let's go to Matt Weiner in New York. Matt. Whitaker busts behind the right. And they've got a first down. They move the chains inside the 15-yard line. Coming back with the running play, not much doing that time, and it will be second down as Gerald McCoy jams the point of attack. Biggest difference that I've seen outside of trying to run the football is a change in the attitude from Texas. As I said, it, it's the first time these first these first two series in the second half where they look like they want to attack Oklahoma. Their tempo is cranked up, and they have Oklahoma for the first time sitting back more as opposed to coming after Texas. Cody Johnson, he'll block for him, throw end zone, Shipley going up in the air, incomplete. Jackson, Brian Jackson from DeSoto, Texas, a senior corner, was all over number eight. Boy, Brian Jackson has been all over him most of this football game. Shipley ends up again catching the football, but it's because Brian Jackson is able to be physical at 6'1", 200-pound boundary corner, winning the battle between he and Jordan Shipley throughout this football game. He just bodied him to the boundary, and Colt had nowhere to go. Whitaker checks in, but he is split to the right. Texas will spread the field on third and ten. Fires back inside on the slant. Touchdown, Goodwin. The freshman with the first touchdown carries it over the end zone. What a 
spark Goodwin has given this team. With the injured Sam Bradford watching from the OU sideline, our first touchdown of the game. So the adjustments by Greg Davis and Mac Brown at halftime. The insertion of the freshman. And Hunter Lawrence tacks on the extra point. And now, heats on Landry Jones. As you're watching ESPN on ABC. Well, Texas trailed in this game, 6-0. So 13 unanswered points. And this half, they've had a field goal and then the game's first touchdown as Marquise Goodwin, the speedster, with his first touchdown ever as a Longhorn. And you're going to be seeing a lot of 84 down the road. Fielded at the four by Madhu. Moses breaks a tackle. Down to the 32. Herbie takes us back to that score. A great job, Brent, by, by Colt McCoy. He's got five offensive linemen here to be able to block. Here's the blitz off of the edge. What it does is it frees up one-on-one -on -one coverage. Here's Jordan Shipley, who's going to get to the inside, and it leaves it all alone for the young freshman to go one-on-one -on -one and make the play. Colt McCoy makes the play by getting rid of the ball. Six defenders came. He had five offensive linemen to block. He knows that he's got to be able to account for Travis Lewis. He gets rid of the ball quickly and a great job by the freshman Goodwin of fighting off the potential tackle by Carter to take it in. Now the redshirt freshman, number 12, Landry Jones, completes it to the outside to DeMarco Murray and wrestling down is Earl Thomas, the sophomore from Orange, Texas, who's becoming an outstanding safety for Will Muschamp. And for the first time, the entire football game, Oklahoma now trailing in the game. The momentum has changed. The body language, language has changed on the field. Texas has the advantage now. Now it's up to Jones to try to counter an answer. Second down and seven. Jones will take off. There's a penalty flag thrown by the referee. Holding on the offense, number 61, yard penalty, second down. So Hayburn, the center is guilty. Let's check in with Lisa. Well, guys, good news for Texas. As you can see, defensive end number 33, Lamar Houston, back out on the field after that injury. They were working on his right knee, took him back into the locker room, and put a brace on him. Now he's back out there. Guys? Thanks, Lisa. Second down at 17. So the senior from Colorado Springs back on the field for the Horns. Sergio Kendall. Moving around. Try to get in from outside right. And Tanell picks up the first down. Tanell's second catch on the day. And it's a good job by Oklahoma attacking the seams and going after Texas, who has their safeties up close to the line of scrimmage. Aaron Williams that time involved in the tackle. You can see he's fortunate to be able to get involved here right there from behind to help slow down to get Shockey Brown enough time to make that tackle. But Tanel close to he's down, getting uh, away Herbie. from that. That's, yep. uh, so she, I mean, the walking wounded on the, uh, on the Oklahoma sideline is just... Unbelievable. Starting with their Heisman Trophy winner, who uh, the second series of the game played only two series. He still does have another year of eligibility left. Now, McCoy, on the other hand, is a senior. Great protection. Wide open and complete. Caleb. And Thomas was closing fast, but Caleb with daylight that time. They turned him loose. Absolutely great read here by Jones. He's reading the corner to the top. Brown comes up on Broyles, and he's got a nice little window there to the outside. That's one that Caleb would love to have back. Now on second down. And inbounds is Kenny with the grab near midfield. And there's a penalty flag down. Personal foul. Defense number 91, 15 yards added to the end of the play. 
We've seen a lot of these called today, Brent. I mean, from the very early part of this football game, what are they thinking here? I know it's a rivalry game. That was uh, wow. Keiston Randall, a sophomore from Beaumont, are you kidding me? Texas, ripping him down a little bit late. Ripping is a... So we've had Herbie, it looks wow. like, uh, about 15 penalties and uh, about 158 yards so far in this game. First down and 10 for Landry Jones. Up in that pistol directly in front of the tailback. That's Brown. Brown picks up a yard. So if we take a look, second down and ten. Broyles slips a tackle. Wide open down the sideline. End zone. Dashes in. Touchdown. Oh, you. The go-to man, Ryan Broyles, coming off a shoulder injury, takes it 35 yards for the Sooners. Jimmy Stevens, this good time. Well, this is a pressure from Oklahoma. Broyles is right here. He's going to come out to the flat. But what I want you to watch is the effort over here by Brandon Caleb with the effort to block. You can see, just throws it out to the flat, makes the catch, slips the defender, and look at Caleb in front of him. Picks up a little chip block there, still hustling downfield to help out. Great effort there by Caleb. But again, it began with Broyles against the pressure from Texas. He slips off Aaron Williams, and then he gets downfield. And that's what everybody wanted to know all week. Would Broyles be healthy enough to make a difference in this game? And that's the first chance he's had that opportunity. I told you we'd have a shootout. And now here we go. <laughs> here we go. Greg Davis and Kevin Wilson, the two offensive coordinators, do a great job of making adjustments at halftime to give their offense some confidence. That's part of the battle, just getting your guys to believe after a first half like that, you, that you can go out there and make plays. Top of the hour, 2 o'clock here in Dallas. In case you just joined us, it has been a fierce defensive struggle. Our only touchdowns have come here in the third quarter. And Heisman Trophy winner Sam Bradford has been sidelined. He re-entered that right shoulder of his. So a short kick up, kickoff, run up to the 10-yard line. And D.J. Monroe, he'll be run out of bounds. So remind Nobody wants to buy in. I think Kirk Ferentz is using that to get his team fired up. That's a huge win today for the Hawkeyes. Nation's second longest winning streak. And how many folks really know it? Now Colt McCoy got time, comes down the sideline, comes back to the youngster out of bounds. How about this freshman suddenly? He scored the Horns touchdown. Now they probe deep, but he's out of bounds on this one. And Herbie, what's impressive, this is not a track man. This oh. is a football player who happens to be able to run. I remember you and I were to practice a few weeks ago, and we were getting ready for Texas Tech, watching him in practice. I was blown away with how much of a football player he is with track speed. He can catch the football. Great instincts as a receiver. But being able to beat Oklahoma's defense on the outside, important to opening up the rest of this offense for Colt McCoy. Second down and 10 for McCoy. Here's Shipley, the roommate. Reaching out toward the first down, and uh, Frank's tackling him as we check in with Lisa. Brent, you were talking about Ryan Broyles and that shoulder injury. He's actually playing with a hairline fracture in his right shoulder blade. Yeah, that's, that's remarkable, and uh, Reynolds just comes busting across on Fozzie Whitaker. And if you just joined us, that's the kind of defense we've had all day long. Right in the middle of the defense. The guard is not, not able, David Snow not able to get up to Reynolds. And Oklahoma, those third down situations been stepping up time after time today. Justin Tucker. Franks. 
makes this one go on into the end zone. And we check in with Matt Weiner in New York. About seven minutes it looks like left in that one. And here we're 317 left in the third quarter. As you look down on this grand scene. If you like to visit different venues and see different college football games, this is on your must-do list. Peyton Manning is here, and he said for me to remind everybody that the Tennessee Volunteers are also off. As his Indianapolis Colts have a bye week, and that's why he came to see this game. Landry Jones hands it off to DeMarco, and he's run out of bounds after picking up a yard on the play. Like a late flag may have come in there. I don't know if it was a holding call. You could see it all the way over near the boundary there by the Oklahoma Sooner coaching staff. Holding on the offense, number 34. Ten yard penalty. First up. Matt Clapp got caught there. There's a there's a pretty good one, huh? I'll tell you. Young man stayed at Tennessee for four years, got his degree, didn't leave early, and uh, I'll tell you. Chris Fowler's taking notes there. Yeah, he looks very serious. With our college game day producer Lee Pitt, getting very serious here. Three minutes now, left here in the third. Protection overthrows the middleman. Attack the middle of the field. He had good time that yeah, time. He, he, he did, and, and again, I think Texas, what they're trying to do is keep everything in front of them, and they're, they're starting to close in towards the line of scrimmage. And what Kevin Wilson is trying to do to try to counter that is getting the ball, throw more downfield, and trying to find the seams. That time, he just had to throw that football away. Good coverage. Underneath on second down and 20, and uh, there's another penalty flag. Is Rattery, young man who's playing a lot of tight end today, with Eldridge switching back into the offensive line in the middle of things. It's the chop block. Personal foul, chop block on the offense number 76. That was Jarvis Jones who was guilty, but uh, wasn't much of a gain. So this is going to bring up a long third down. See if Will Muschamp decides to dial up some pressure or if he's going to sit back with seven or eight guys in coverage. Make the young freshman have to read the defense. And sometimes that's tougher than anything for a freshman to have to deal with, reading all those burnt orange jerseys. Under pressure. Sacked. At the seven-yard line. Eddie Jones, who's played a lot for Muschamp today, makes the tackle. Will Muschamp fired up because he's getting pressure from four. He brings Eddie Jones into this game. This is the speed. This is where they feel that they had an advantage coming in today is getting after Oklahoma's offensive line. But that time, give Jones credit because he went around the All-American, Trent Williams, from the left side. Way back to punt for the sixth time in Jordan Shipley. Standing back in midfield, and here comes the rush on the punter, gets it off. Fair catch by Shipley at the 46-yard line. The entire world blacked out. Here we go. Great field position for Texas. Tie game. See if they can capitalize on this opportunity here. Fake looking to throw it on first down. Can't find an open receiver. Still dancing. Throws it away. Two things about that play that stood out. Great coverage, number one, by Oklahoma's secondary. Colt McCoy didn't have anything to do there to be, but to try to buy some time. But how about the initial protection? It's like watching two different games from the first half to the second half. The first half, every time Colt McCoy dropped back to throw, almost by the time he took the snap and the shotgun, there was penetration. Now in the second half, we're seeing this offensive line, because of the play calling, start to settle down and take a little bit more control. Pull takes off. He saw the linebacker step up on his right 
and took off to the hole to the left. And he also followed Whitaker here, who just does enough to get into the way, just right there, enough to get in the way of Travis Lewis to give him a little bit more of an opportunity to pick up another four or five yards. Cody Johnson, the big back checks in, and there's a problem getting the tight end set, and finally Smith does. Now Buckner comes off late. Still plenty of time on third and one. McCoy keeps it himself. So here is the offensive line who has been under fire, especially in the first half, but they've sprung to life a little bit. Snow and Huey have worked at, at right guard, and there you see how many starts they have, and the Huey is out there right now. Yulatovsky, the left tackle, three seniors, Paul, Tanner, and Yulatovsky. Johnson. Johnson powers his way toward the first down marker. How about some nifty footwork here by Cody Johnson. That's what he's known for. He's dropped his weight. He's in better playing shape from when he was in camp, but just a little bit of a stutter step. And then he gets downfield, and then he doesn't give up. See how he keeps moving those feet, and he almost gets into position to pick up a first down. That's how you slow down Oklahoma's pass rush. Runs like that from Cody Johnson. So we'll head to the final quarter, tied at 13. The Red River rivalry. We got some 92,000 on hand, and nobody leaving. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, there's the prize that everyone is searching for, the Coach's Trophy, presented by Dr. Pepper to be awarded at the 2010 City BCS National Championship game. Johnson this time does pick up the first down. Cody Johnson's a sophomore, Herbie, from Waller, Texas. I really like the action that he brings into this offense. What a difference compared to the speed of Fozzie Whitaker. You bring in Cody Johnson, boy, he is lowering his pads and running right into that Oklahoma defensive line, and the line is going the other way. Well, yeah, young Goodwin is out there one-on-one -on -one to the top of your screen. First and ten, and uh, the whistle. They're saying that there was a false start. Beal jumping across. But says he was pulled. Tight end Smith. Yeah, you know, we've talked about uh, young Goodwin, number 84, who scored their touchdown. And uh, back in high school, he set the national high school record in the long jump. That young man who's off to one of the receivers right here, he's gone 26-10. All right, seven-time Texas 5A state champion in the long jump. Looking, comes back, sideline, diving attempt, and he's got it. There he is, young Mr. Goodwin, growing up right before your eyes. This is a great effort here and a great throw by Colt McCoy, who anticipates this and makes the throw well before Goodwin is coming out of his break. Like you said earlier, Brent, this is not a track guy learning how to catch a football. He has a pretty good feel for things. And I think even if they take another look at this, I thought he got his hand underneath the point of the ball. Didn't it look like it? Oh, that's a great, what a great, great catch. Great effort and a great catch by Goodwin. Yeah, it, what, what is it, 6'4", six, 6'4", four, six, four, or 6'5"? Yeah, he's huge. When he gets up to speed, it's unbelievable with that stride of his. Well, here we go now. Goodman, one of the wide receivers, second down and four, tied at 13, inside of 14 minutes. By the way, when other receivers start to make catches, you start to get back to the old reliable Jordan Shipley, who gets left one-on-one -on -one more. And here's Whitaker. 
And he is brought down immediately by Austin English. English also had a big game. English, McCoy, Taylor, and Beal. Tough front to block. One of the more athletic and experienced fronts in the country. McCoy is a great player. Has probably the quickest first step of any interior defensive lineman in college football. But this sprint, at this point in the game, this is as big as it gets for a third down in this football game. Kirkendall, and it's going to be close. Short, it looks like. Proctor coming up to make the stop, and of course, uh, if it is short, Hunter Lawrence will come on for the field goal, and that's exactly what's happened. Well, the, pre the pressure was coming again from the linebackers, and Sam Proctor, who was left one-on-one -on -one against Kirkendall, had to make that tackle in the open field, and by stepping up and making that play, of course, he now forces his field goal attempt, but that was a good job in the open field by Proctor. Oklahoma has to be conscious of a fake with Shipley. It's a fourth and two. He'll hold it. And Hunter Lawrence with a 32-yarder puts Texas back ahead. 16-13 here in the fourth quarter. Timeout. MetLife is providing today's area of coverage of the Cotton Bowl and the State Fair of Texas. Visit MetLife.com to learn more about MetLife's long history of providing coverage at major sporting events. 16-13, Texas has taken the lead. You know, we came here, Herbie, expecting a shootout with uh, two returning O'Brien watch list candidates for that quarterback award, and instead it's been a defensive struggle here today. The 6-3 halftime score, I think we all anticipated much of the same in the second half, but we have seen some adjustments and 20 points combined here in the second half so far. High kickoff, fielded at the five by Madu again. Run out of bounds at the 20, and uh, Matt Weiner, what uh, what happened with Ohio? Hawkeyes now in the driver's seat. Very surprised by the lack of development. A young Terrell Pryor at this point in his second year as a starter. Now it is up to Landry Jones here, Herbie. With 12 minutes to go, trailing by the field goal. Flares to Brown for a first down on that sideline. He broke a tackle and picked up a few more before Curtis Brown was able to bring him down. This is a great job and a simple throw by Jones. Actually, Cameron Kinney takes Curtis Brown to the inside, and when he followed him to the inside as a cornerback, boy, there was a nice little lane to the outside for big yards. Firing sideline incomplete, and it'll be a second down. You know, Herbie, coming into this game, and I'm thinking now about the Texas offense, even though they're not on the field. Shipley had caught at least 10 passes in the last two games. They've shut him down, held him to four, but up pops the freshman. They take the cellophane off Goodwin, yep. and he's been a difference maker here today. Yeah, they've had a hard time getting Shipley the ball, but you're right. Different playmakers here in the second half. Cody Johnson's been nice. Bobby Whitaker taking some of the pressure off. Other players are making plays besides Shipley. Second down and 10. Flashes that wide receiver screen. There's the penalty flag. DeMarco Murray was out wide, the running back, trying to get the ball back in his hands. He had 100 yards receiving in the first half. Got to get Broyles here for a holding, holding call. On the offense, number 85, 10-yard penalty, second down. Aaron Williams, the defensive back, looked like he might have a chance to actually make the tackle here. Keep an eye on Broyles right in the middle, how he locks up on number four there. You know, DeMarco Murray, since he went down with that injury, just doesn't seem to have the same spring in his legs that he had at the, at the beginning of this football game. You applaud him for his effort to continue to play, but it just doesn't seem to be the same threat when he touches the football. Second and 20. He's getting that flare to the outside, nothing doing for Brown. He's brought down by Keenan Robinson, the linebacker. Well, Texas has been playing so much man-to-man -man coverage, this time sitting back in zone. See it right here. Here's a great look at Robinson closing in in the open field, having to discipline. Good technique there. That's a tough man to bring down in the open field, and that time he makes the play. Third and 20. 
Brown on the middle screen. Can he get the first down? Rolls toward it, but he'll be marked down close to the 50. This, where, this is where Bob Stoops usually is aggressive. This would be an interesting call for him coming up short. Just but a I, little short. I love the call by Kevin Wilson here on third down and forever. You're thinking there's no way they're going to pick up a first down. They get it to Chris Brown, and nobody wanted to kind of close in on him to take it away. Kirby, it looks like they're going. They're not even going to bring the kicking team out unless he's going to go to a hard count here and see if somebody jumps across on fourth and one. Brown and trying to pick it up. There's the line judge coming down on the other side. He's he's short based on that spot at the top. They will, I'm sure, bring the chains out on this. This is very close. Can can you and I just say before whether he made it or not? I I personally I know it's been a close game. Applaud Bob Stoops for staying true to who he is, the aggressiveness. And whether he makes it or not, that's it. Again, much like the Miami game from a few weeks ago, he went for it, got to take the chance. But it's short. Texas football. When he makes these risky decisions like this at midfield, Will Muschamp's bunch stepped up there. When he makes it, uh, takes a chance like that, he knows that it, now it's on his defense. This is, this is the point in the game where you're going to define the outcome. Can the defense come up and make a stop now after that, that risk that Bob Stoops just made? Andrew Bradford trying to bring some sideline leadership over there with a first down and 10, and the OU defense back on the field. Oklahoma trails by three inside of 10 minutes. Coming back is McCoy. So the running game here in the second half has been the difference in the game so far, and there's a penalty Personal flag foul. down. Jeff Block on the offense, number 71, 15-yard penalty. First down. Seen a few of those personal foul chop, chop block calls. Chris Hall that time guilty. That is a big, big penalty. Takes them way back. In that area, when, when there's another offensive lineman engaged like this, you cannot just dive at the legs of trying to protect the defensive lineman's knees. First down and 25. Good ones back on the field. McCoy throws it to him, and this time he could not make the grab as we check in with Matt Weiner. All right, Matt, thank you. Second out and 25 here. We still have almost nine and a half minutes to go. Now they tried to set a little bit of a screen in the middle, and that was Whitaker who could not shake. Mr. Beal. Not many players do. We've talked about the Nagurski, and there must be a half dozen candidates on these two teams. Beal's one of them, Lewis, McCoy. They would all be considered the top defensive player of the season. And they've all added to their highlight reels today, haven't they? The they, way they have. The way every one of these candidates have played. Kendall, McElroy, Thomas over there for the Horns. Great defensive performances here. Third down and 24. Don't want to do anything careless here if you're Colt McCoy. He just flares it off. Take a few yards and then bring the punt team back out. So for the people back in Norman that like to call the call-in shows after the game and complain about things, make note that the risk that Bob Stoops took did not, at this time, did not backfire on it. The defense steps up, they force the punt, and they get the football back. Franks is back deep to return that punt. Stoops stays on top of the special teams. Let's see if they come after Justin Tucker this time. Very good punt. And 
Franks will not pick it up. He mishandled one on the bounce earlier in the game, but this one rolls dead inside the 10-yard.